What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension for architecture tutorial. So in today's video we're going to check out an extension that allows you to create an entire city with a single click. So this video is another part of my series on SketchUp extensions for architecture. So far we've talked about extensions that allow you to create windows and roofs and smart profiles that fill in framing and just a bunch of tools for working with architecture. So links to today's extension along with the other extensions from this series can be found in the SketchUp Extensions for Architecture guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. So that guide is a guide to 20 of my favorite extensions for architecture. So if you want to check that out, there are links to both free and paid extensions in there. And you can download that again at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Placemaker is an extension for SketchUp that allows you to quickly create geographical context inside your SketchUp models with the click of a button. So it can add things like satellite imagery, roads, paths, water and trees, and then my favorite feature, which is buildings. So this can actually create all of the buildings inside of a certain area that you select really quickly. So I will note this is a paid extension. So the link to this extension where you can find all of the info about the payment or the cost and everything else can be found in the architecture extensions guide. So the way this works is simple. You simply select a place. So you can select an area by finding a place that you'd like to download and then clicking on the select area button. And then from there, you can kind of dial in where you want this to be. So you can move this up and down and in and out to select those different areas. This is limited. You can't just take like an entire city like Denver and bring the whole thing in, um, though you could bring in different tiles and make this bigger. But for now, we're just gonna import an area just by doing this. We'll go ahead and drag this whole area in. We'll click on import area. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring in your satellite imagery into your model. So, um, so far it works uh, fairly similar to the SketchUp add more imagery function. However, now this is where things start getting interesting because now you can start bringing in things like your roads and your paths. And so there's two different ways that you can do this. You can either bring these objects in separately by clicking on each one of these. So you can bring in like import your OSM road data would bring in your roads. So you can bring these in separately or there's a button up here um, for make place That'll bring in all of this stuff except high resolution imagery with a single click. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these in one at a time. And so, and we'll talk a little bit about these as it brings them in. So when you click on these and you bring these in, what this is gonna do is this is gonna generate a road based on the map data that we have in here. And the roads are all gonna have different widths depending on uh, what they're kind of called out as inside the map. So like your freeways are gonna be wider than your just uh, roads through the city right here or your residential roads. But this is going to bring all of those in and this is going to generate those roads. And depending on the options you have, this can take a little while to bring this in, especially if you have the button for merge roads with faces selected. So that'll actually merge the road geometry with your face geometry in here. So as you can see, when you do this, this actually brings in and models all of these different roads and puts them in here as a in a geographically accurate way. And so you can see if you click on this, there's different options in here for the roads when they're first generated. So freeways are wider than highways, which are wider than residential. You can set all of those options and adjust these however you want whenever you create this. The option for merge with surface can also so be really good. Um, if you're using terrain, um, this can merge those roads with terrain as well. So paths is just going to bring in path data. So this one kind of depends on if there is any path data or if there are any paths in here. So you can see how these are going to come in as different layers. So like for example, if I turn um, my location off and also my roads, you can see that paths have been created where those paths show up um, in the actual map data. So if we look at this with our location back on, You can see how, for example, there's paths and sidewalks that run along this road right here. So those have been brought in and colored as kind of a gray color. So um, 
just this alone, the ability to bring all of this in can be a huge time saver. So you can also bring in any bodies of water. So you do need to select that surface before you click on that button. But if there are any bodies of water, I don't know that there are. I guess there are a couple in here. This will bring in data for that. And then also anything that's been designated as a green area, um, trees will come in you can use the trees function in order to do that. So in this case, I don't think there's a lot of locations that are designated as green areas. You can see how you get a little bit of tree data in here because this has been designated as kind of a park area over here. Um, and that's gonna vary just based on how things are designated inside of the maps. The last thing that you can bring in, other than the high resolution imagery, which we'll talk about in a second, and also my favorite function in here, is the ability to bring in buildings. And so when you bring in your buildings, what this is going to do, when you click on this, is this is going to go find the map data for this area, and this is actually going to generate buildings based on that map data. So you can see how this actually brings in buildings for all of these different locations, just like this. And then just one other thing to note is you'll notice that right here, um, all of the buildings are pretty short. So when you bring in the buildings using the USA beta right here, it'll bring in a lot more buildings, but they don't necessarily have that height data associated with them, especially in areas that aren't like metropolitan downtown areas. However, when you do that import for other areas like downtown Denver here, for example, you can see what this does is this brings in much more detail detailed um, detailed images of your different buildings and things like that in those downtown areas. So you're, in, in order to bring some of that stuff in, instead of using the Buildings USA, which brings in a lot more buildings, but maybe not as detailed the buildings, the Buildings Global will bring in more of a high-rise type uh, high rise type location, which you can see paints a really great picture of downtown areas and things like that. And so one of the other valuable things about this extension is if we go through here and let's go ahead and turn off our buildings just for a second and our roads, and let's take a look at the imagery that gets brought in. So you know, one of the areas where SketchUp is struggling and even the base placemaker here is struggling is the quality of the data that gets brought in. Um, you would get slightly better satellite data if we zoomed in a little bit more before we brought this in. But you can see how right now our imagery just isn't very good, right? Like you kind of zoom in here and it's like, all right, this is all pixelated and ugly and stuff like that. Placemaker offers a high resolution data option where you can bring in high resolution or ultra high resolution near map data. So near map data is really, really detailed satellite data that you can bring in in order to really kind of show up space in detail. And so the way that we're going to do that is that data has an additional cost associated with it. It's very expensive from the providers. And so we don't want to bring in this whole area because we don't really need this whole area. But what we would do instead is we would just right click and we would unlock this object. And then within this object, we would just kind of split out an area or a face like this and we just make it a separate face and we'd select it and then what we could do is we could click the little drop down and select near map data and so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to bring in this high resolution data and you get a certain you need to buy a certain number of tile credits in order to do this but what we're going to do here is we're just going to click on this it's going to confirm that we want to use tiles in order to bring this in but i'm just going to click on the button for download and i'm going to bring this in and what this is going to do is this is going to replace that existing data with new near map data that's going to be much more high resolution that's going to take just a minute for it to download and import this, but now if you zoom in and you take a look at this uh, scene right here, you can see how you get very detailed, high-resolution images um, inside of your SketchUp model. So if you zoom in, you can see everything in really great detail. And just to give you kind of an idea, if you zoom back out and you compare these next to each other, you can see how it's just ridiculously detailed right here. So this is one feature that I don't think is offered anywhere else from any any other provider inside of SketchUp, but if you need high resolution data of something in an area like this, you can get that using this near map imagery. And so now we can just go back in and turn everything back on. So like our paths and our roads and things like that. 
And so now let's say that you were gonna build something in a location maybe over here or something like this. You can see how you have really detailed geographical context that you can use for creating plans or just seeing how different roads are in here or seeing where the buildings are, things like that. So overall, this is a very powerful tool and it's one of my favorites that you can use within SketchUp. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you tried Placemaker? Can you see a use for this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.